there. Welcome back to the Household of Faith Daily Devotionals. We're continuing on talking about our um, goal setting. And today, it's day 54. And um, we're going to talk about what God establishes. Now, we're going to take um, our context from Proverbs 16 and 9. Proverbs has a lot to say about people, you know, doing what's right, getting rich and things like that. Um, this particular verse of scripture simply says that, you know, people can plan whatever they want. You can make all the plans that you want, but God is the one who decides. And you might say, well, you know, does that go for everybody? Well, you know, the Lord lets us make our own choices. We really, we really do. In context, for a believer, there are no choices, there are no decisions, there are no plans made outside of consulting God. It's just that simple. Because if we want to, what, what the verse of scripture says, uh, in all of our ways we should acknowledge him and he will direct our path. Okay? The scripture talks about, and people love to say, well, God says he will give me the desires of my heart. Yeah, yeah, says that, but does it mean just that simply? No, it doesn't. Because if you don't commit yourself to God, if you don't acknowledge him, why would he give you anything? Why would he give you what you want? And we, when we get, a lot of times we get exactly what we say we want and we find out it is just not what we thought it was. There was a, a lady in, I, I, uh, that my mother knew her name was Celestine Milan. They were good friends. They were running buddies when they were unsaved and out in the street. They were drinking buddies. And they got they both got saved. They were spiritual powerhouses. And um, my mother would always tell the story about Sister Milan. And she would say that she would be praying, Lord bless me, Lord bless me, Lord bless me. She wanted to be, you know, she wanted to have more than what she had. <laughs> And my mother would, it would tell the story. She would say um, that she prayed this all the time. She said, and finally, the Lord said, can you stand to be blessed? And she answered, no. No, no, I can't. Sometimes we pray and we ask God for things, and we wonder why we don't get them. And, I mean, I talk a lot about how we ask God for stuff and we or we're praying about whatever it is and we're not hearing from God. Well, most of the time God is speaking. We're just we just don't like what he's saying. <laughs> I'm seriously, we don't like what he's saying. And so we're just like uh I you know you ask someone else or you're you're in every prayer line, you go to every prophet meeting and you know all of these people who have who flow in the gifts of word of knowledge and prophecy and wisdom, you know, we're all up in that and looking for something different from what God has told us, what we already know he said. And a lot of times God has already said no or not at this time. If he just flat out says no, take it and, and go on about your business. If he says not at this time, my question is, okay, I got you. Is there something that I need to do, not just to speed it up, <laughs> But it's something that I'm doing that is hindering it because it's not always no, just a flat no. I have rarely gotten a flat no from the Lord. I've gotten a, not right now. You're not ready for that. Oh, and that's a whole nother ball game. So I have a lot of things that I would like to do and... There are some things that I have heard, and there are some prophetic words that I have gotten. And I have said, like, Lord, well, why? Well, how does this happen? This is not God yet. I'm like, okay. But I can't live my life based upon a word of prophecy. I have to live my life based upon my relationship with the Lord. And God is very much capable of keeping his word. He don't need me running in behind him. Nudging him in the back, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, hurry, hurry, hurry. <laughs> He's not, that doesn't, that doesn't move him. And all the crying and whining, it's like, no, okay, I can take that. And I'm going to move on. So whatever plans that you make, 
know that God is the one who, if you have truly surrendered your life to him, he's the one who's going to make the decision. And if you make plans outside of consulting him, I can guarantee you that they're not going to come to fruition, or at least they're not going to work out the way you think. But if you make plans with God, and I mean in a partnership type environment, where you say, Lord, this is what I'd like to do. And I have done that. You know, the Lord has commissioned me to do something, and I wanted to do something else. And I said, okay. I've learned to say, okay, um, all right. But after that, can I do whatever it was that I wanted to do? And you know what he has told me? Sometimes he has said, no, I don't want you to do that right now or at all. And sometimes he says, yeah, you can do it later. Yeah, you can do it after you finish this. And sometimes he said, well, you need to wait on that for a while. So, I, and I'll take it. Whatever he tells me, I'll take it. It's okay. Because he knows what's best for me. I, I, I like to do and I'm interested in all kinds of things. But he really knows what's best for me. And I accept that. And that's something that you might want to think about. <laughs>